I'd like to thank God for giving me the opportunity to have the Coptic Orthodox faith. I was a Buddhist. Uh, my family, my dad, he's he's atheist, and my mom, she's she's um, most superstitious than Buddhist. So I grew up with the Buddhist influence, and at the age of 16. I prayed to my Buddhist very much, and I thought maybe in the future that I might even become a Buddhist nun. But then, something happened to let me know that I can't, because the prayers I was not comfortable with. And then, as I got to the age of 22, a miracle happened that changed my life. I heard the voice of God, God the Father, I felt His presence. I felt him coming. When I was on the phone with someone who was preaching Christianity to me, I felt all of a sudden the presence of a holy presence in front of me. And the presence, I asked in my mind, where is this feeling coming from? And the answer was, from God. And then I asked God, I said, God, which, relu which religion are you in? And the answer was, I'm in Christianity. And then I said, God, are you not in Buddhism? He told me he's in Christianity. And Christianity was, at the time, a religion that I didn't like at all because when you believe in one religion, you, you don't feel the same way about others. And then I asked God, what is Christianity? And he let me know. He said, it's that man nailed to the cross. He said, that man. He didn't say, I'm that man. So it's not Jesus speaking. It's God the Father. He said, that man nailed to the cross. The the Bible and the church. And those were the three things that scared me. When you're not a Christian, those three things are scary. So then, God also let me know that He has heaven to give me. And I asked God, what is heaven? And He let me feel a bit of heaven. Heaven, all of a sudden, I felt my chest. All of a sudden, I felt it very strong. In the Holy Spirit pulling deep, 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 deep into my chest like a black hole, but it was this strong, powerful, forceful feeling of peace, love, and joy. And it's very powerful, very strong. And I felt it going, going, going in, in, into infinity. I felt the, the peace, love, and joy that kept on going strong, so powerful. I felt it going, going into infinity. It never ended. I felt infinite peace, love, and joy. You know how later in heaven, we will have be better blessed with the Holy Spirit of God filling us. And why was this so fulfilling? Because it was infinite and it's very powerful. And then when I asked God, I said, I said, I, all I want is this. I want to go in heaven, to, to heaven, this peace, love, and joy. And God said that, that then you have to be a Christian. And some other things happened. Um, he spoke to me for about two minutes, and then at the end I told him, I want to be a Christian, I want to be a Christian, I want to be a Christian. And why I'm telling you this is that to confirm that, the Christ that God is in Christianity, from someone who loved God, I did, and I thought he was in Buddhism, to the point that I thought maybe later when I grow up, I'll be a Buddhist nun because I love God so much. Since at a young age, I always pray to God. But since I really love God so much, even though I was born in a family that didn't have God, God guided me to it. So sometimes when you ask questions, well, you know, you, you, you were born in the faith. What about all those who weren't born in it? Why God does that? Well, I'll tell you. If they who were not born in the faith in Christianity really love God, God will give them the faith somehow. God, that nothing is too hard for God. And for those who have the faith, like all of you, I want you to know that after I became a Christian and had faith, I had, to, I had the freedom of choice to choose which church to join. I spent a year and a half going through the Coptic Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, talking to, to the priests, praying the masses. I went to Catholic churches, I went to Anglican ones, Protestant fellowship and all that. I went to over 20 churches, talked to monks and nuns and priests and pastors of the different churches. And you know what? I get to choose. Because my family, they're not Christian. 
And now I'm by myself. I was 22 when I had faith. I was baptized at age 24. I took a year and a half to church shop. And I did a um, research into the history of Christianity to know how the churches came about and why they're all so different and they're not together. And for my search and for my prayers and the prayers from all of you, you know what? I know without a doubt the best is orthodoxy. And I know from God. And then when God may know the best, the church that has the best faith, meaning the most truth. I told God, I said, you got me into this. You told me you are in Christianity. Now that I have the faith, you know what? It's so confusing. They're all not together. What is the best? I want the best for myself. Because I get to choose. And God let me know. Orthodoxy. I said, okay, then give me the orthodox faith. And then he gave me the orthodox faith. And then I said, okay, there's two to orthodoxy. There's the Coptic and there's the, the Eastern Orthodox with the Greek and Russians. And then when I went, you know what? When I compare the spirit of all the churches, you know all churches and all religions, they're praying to a spirit. When I come to a church, I feel the spirit of the church. And I feel the spirit of the people in general. I feel if the God is scary, or I can say devilish, or not, I'm very sensitive to the devil. Because I was not a Christian before. So, and why I didn't become a Buddhist nun? Because I felt the prayers that were praying to the devil, I felt. They pray seance. You know, things that's devilish. So, what made me join the Coptic Orthodox Church, I tell you? It's the Spirit of God in the Church. The Spirit of God in the Coptic Orthodox Church of all the churches that I prayed to and visited. The Spirit, it's most pure, it's most holy, it's most, I would say, deep. It's the best. No one is telling me to join any church. My family, they're, they're not Christians. I get to choose, and I want the best for myself. It, it's okay, Father, thank you. I want the best for myself, and you know what? God let me know, and through experience, I took a year and a half to pray all over, and to ask to interview few the priests and, and of, of different churches and the pastors. And I know from God and from experience, this is the best for me, for sure. The church, the Coptic Orthodox Church, the faith is right, is the best on earth. The, peop the, the people, all of you, the congregation as a whole, you people are the most, I would say, humble and loving people. And you're very simple. And you people are very good at taking, how can, how can I say, taking um, injustice because of the land of Egypt that we live in. It's not everything so fair, so just. Your people are so, how can I say, so humble. And God is holy, God is humble. God is love, God is humble. And I find this in the congregation. I've been coming to the Coptic Orthodox Church since 1993. Now it's 2023, 30 years. In the last 25 years, I've been, thank you, Father. In the last 25 years, I've been living in the monastery of St. Damiana in Egypt. It's where her original monastery was and where her, her tomb is with the 40 virgins who were martyred. And you know what? I love God so much that how did I become a nun, people ask. Remember I told you that when I was in Buddhism, I thought of maybe becoming a nun because I love my Buddha so much. When I entered a new religion, Christianity, I thought maybe, maybe I become a nun in Christianity. And I prayed about it, and um, I was working as a pharmacist, actually by education, I'm a pharmacist, U of T, University of Toronto graduate, uh, faculty of pharmacy, working with Shopping Drug Mart, full time, and I was happy and all that, but you know what? It was not fulfilling. I reached the point in my life that I was happy. I didn't have any problems. My education was good. I, I graduated. I got 
a secure job. I, I was doing well as a pharmacist, had full-time position. I was also volunteering for volunteering jobs aside because I like to help people. I'm happy with my family, happy with my friends, happy with everything. I was healthy. I was a point in my life, I was happy. But you know what? I was not fulfilled. Have you reached that point in your life sometimes that you're happy but not fulfilled? That's what happened to me. And I felt like, you know what, God, I want to be fulfilled. And God guided me to, I feel I, I need to love you more. I need to love you more. And as I prayed that, I feel, I told God, I want to be as close to you as possible. Now that I found you after 20 some odd years, I love you so much since I was young, but I didn't know you were in Christianity. I love, I want to be as close to you as possible because you only can fulfill me. The world can give you happiness and temporary joy, but you cannot fulfill us. Why? Because we have a spirit in us. The spirit cannot be fulfilled by worldly creation. The spirit can be only fulfilled by God. So I felt my spirit was not fulfilled. And I prayed to God, and God guided me to love Korea more and talk about maybe I'll be a nun, maybe I'll be a nun. So I went to visit monasteries for nuns in Egypt, in, 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 in the U.S., and I felt drawn to it to the point that by the age of 26, I heard the voice of God telling me when I was visiting St. Dimiana's monastery in Egypt, it was my second time visiting it, just for vacation, I heard the voice of God telling me, enter the monastery to be a servant, um, but be sure it will be your confession father, and that he has planned my work for me and he will, have, he will help me. And I went. So, and now it's been 25 years there. I tell you, the monastic life has fulfilled me. It's, it's the only thing for me personally. And I come back after 25 years. Why? I've been studying the Bible with our nuns for the last 10 years. I study the Bible word by word. And in studying the Bible, it answers all my questions about life. I'm like a life philosopher. You know, when you ask about life, what's the purpose of life for everyone? Why are some people born blind, some people born sick, some people born this way and that way, some people rich, and what happened to people, you know, like um, who don't know God, were not born Christians, what happened, and how to be happy, and why you're, you're not happy, and how to raise your kids, or, or what decisions, how to make life decisions, and all these life questions. I'm like a life philosopher. The questions I've, I've always searched about on my own. And I found answers to them in the Holy Bible as I studied them. The Bible with our nuns word by word. And how the, a Bible, how the Bible can become alive for us. So I want to reassure you that the Coptic Orthodox Church is the best that you should always come to church, stay close to the church. What is the Bible and what is God? I want to tell you that God, He is a, the creator, the most powerful, almighty, good God. In God, He's the source of all goodness. So why do we need to know Him? Why do we need to be close to Him? Why do we need to love Him? We need to know Him in order to know how to live our life. We need to know God to know how to live life. He is the creator of life. He created us and created everything. So in him, he came down, was incarnated to teach us life and how to live the life on earth righteously, which are written in the book of the Bible. The Bible teaches us how to live life, what is right and what is wrong. So I see that some of you are still young, so that you may have decisions. For, for example, in, in school, um, you may have decisions. Maybe there's peer pressure, pressure from your friends, what you should do. You should ask your mom and dad and people in church, your teachers or, or abuna, what you should do. If people are picking on you or, or, or teaching things that may, you're not sure if, if it's right or not, Check with your parents and check with Abuna and people in the church because the world is up, upside down now. There's lots of moral, ethical issues. So you should, you should ask, ask your parents, ask Abuna or ask people in church what is right and wrong because we know what is right and wrong from what. It's not our opinion. We know from God, from God, Jesus Christ came 
to teach us right from wrong. And why should we love God? Because God, He is the source. He, he's the source of love. God is love. How how can we love God more? If we realize God created everything on earth, God created your friends, your mom and dad, your brothers and sisters, your friends, so that they can take care of you and play with you and care for you and all the food that you need to eat, everything that you need, your family provides for you. You're so special. You're you're so special that why why God care for us? Because of his love, he shows his love in caring for you and making you happy, making you have a feel you, you can call God your father. You can think of him also as your friend. So when you're afraid, you can call on God. When you want to you have problems, you're upset or your mom's upset, you can pray to God to bless your mom bless your dad, bless your family, solve your problems. Especially when you're young and you call to God when you pray to Him. God loves prayers of children. Because you people are so pure, so innocent. So you should always try to say, Jesus, I love you every day. And talk to Jesus. Tell Him, take care of mommy. Make mommy and daddy happy. Thank you for, for the love I get from my friends my parents and if you have any doubts or concerns or questions ask Jesus to help you understand and to grow up to be a good boy and good girl do you have any questions that anyone have yes yes why did I choose to become a nun and and what and not get married. Okay. Because I love God, God above all creation. I just love Him so much. How can I say? I know nothing in the world. Even if I was the richest person in the world, have all the money, and have all the food I want to eat, and have all the toys I want to play with, and even have all the friends, you know what? I'd be happy but not satisfied. I feel I not be fulfilled. I reach a point in my life, I don't know if you're adults, have you reached a point in your life that you're happy, but you're not fulfilled? I just reached that, and I was, what, 26 years old. I, I felt that uh, what will fulfill me, I need God more. And I told God, I said, I want you more. I want the lifestyle where I can be as close to you as possible. Because why? I love God. God is a good God. God cares. God protects us from the devil. God, he's created creation for, for us. The sun, the moon, the animals, planet earth, people, everything, my family, everything. Why? For me to enjoy and to love, to feel his love. I feel, God, you're so good. I just love you in return. I wish I can be closer to you. So I got to the point that I told God, all I want is you. And then he guided me to be a nun. To be a nun, you have to love God more than everything else. More than your family, your sisters, your toys, your food, your friends, your games, everything. That everything in the world meant nothing. I just felt like I have to go. I have to go. I just I was, felt I was being tortured staying in the world. I just, I just need you, God. You only can fulfill me. Yes. Well, um, see, practically nowadays, I think you can't become a nun or monk until you kind of finish school. Like we generally don't take them until they finish university or college. Not when you're very young. We don't take them. Why? Because if it's they come to try out for a few years. If they don't make it, we don't want them to leave and not be able to be successful in the world. That they can't work because they didn't finish school. For example, okay, they come out after high school. They say, okay, I want to be a nun. I'm not going to go to university. We said, no, after you finish. We don't take them. Why? Because maybe they feel like they want to be a nun, but when they actually try it out, 
It's not for them. Then those years that they could have went to university after they left the school, it's very hard to go back. Maybe they won't get in, or their mind, you know, your mind just can't back, can't get back into studying. So that is that we wasted their prime years. So we don't do that. We don't. Practically, no. You can love God, but practically, I don't think monastery, like for ours at least, we don't take them until they finish university. Because why? If they don't make it, okay, they can always leave, find a job, no problem. Yes. No, no, I never make miracles. You have to ask like the saints to do it. I just receive miracles. <laughs> I've received so many, so many. Like um, in the five years I was in Toronto, before I went to the monastery to stay for 25 years, I received so many miracles from you, you like from the Coptic Church. Like so many, so many, like, yeah, lots. Yes? We don't know how he looks like. He's a spirit. He doesn't have a... F um, we don't know. We will know when we go to heaven. Because he never came down to, to take a body like Jesus. Jesus came down and took the body of a man, so we know how he looks. But God the Father, we can feel him. We can maybe hear his voice, but he never appeared in person for us to see. Yes? Oh, it's the back of the spirit sort of thing, but not see you know, his, his face. But um, we will see God face to face when we go to heaven. Because God is so big. He's a powerful spirit. Our eyes, human eyes cannot take it. Our body here cannot take how awesome he is to see it. We have to be in the spirit to see his awesome spirit. Because God's a spirit. So when we die and go to heaven, uh, we will just have the spirit to be able to absorb his spirit to see him. Yes? Um, what is the difference um, from Buddhism and Buddhism? It's a totally different world. They, Buddhism, they're not praying to a god. Buddhists are people who through many reincarnations, countless, that for example, okay, your person, if you do good, some powerful force out there that they cannot define what it is is keeping track of your good and bad. So the next lifetime, if you do some bad, lots of bad, next lifetime you will be born maybe as an animal to suffer, or maybe you'll be born as a person who's handicapped, so that you'll be punished. And then after you pay that punishment, being, for example, a person who's handicapped, then you die, and then because you pay your punishment, then you can be born again and be maybe a person that's better. And there's this force keeping track of all these reincarnations of animals being people, people being animals, and, 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 and that the Buddha is one who through reincarnation and doing good, and through meditation and prayer, can reach a high spiritual level that they have the power to like, perform miracles for people on earth. The Buddhists are not God. They, are, they believe, or people who die, 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 die through many re reincarnations have done so much good and, and they pray to the Buddhists so they become so spiritual, they are like so called their saints that they can perform miracles. So there is no God. There is no God in Buddhism. That, that we talk about in Christianity that there's a creator, almighty, good God. They don't have this concept. It's a totally different mindset at all. They're not searching for God. They're not worshiping God. Yes? If they believe that there are many lifetimes. We believe there's afterlife. Afterlife for us is either heaven or hell. But they believe in many lifetimes. And who's keeping track of this? Some power out there that they say we cannot understand. But there is a power and we believe in it. And that's exactly what it is. We can't comprehend it because it's beyond our ability. Beyond human capability to comprehend this power that's, that's keeping track of everything. So they're believing in a power which they say we cannot comprehend. Yes, yes, that girl? Yes, yes. Why do I care for my hair? Because hair is, is, is a symbol of beauty for a female. Like, you know, all of you have beautiful hair. So we leave the beauty. We don't care about being beautiful. We don't care about being rich. We don't care about makeup. 
You know, so it's just a sign that we don't care about what we think because we're too busy with Jesus. Yes? Some miracles that I that happened to me. Okay, I'll tell you uh, a miracle. Maybe it will be interesting. Maybe too interesting for all of you. My baptismal day. Yes, yes. I always read this. Okay, I'll just tell you two miracles and then you can ask the questions after, okay? Just, okay, my baptismal days. I, I guess most of you were baptized when you were a baby, so you don't remember, right? Oh my God, you people missed it. You people missed out all the real parties, okay? I'll tell you how it is. I was 24 years old, working as a pharmacist already when I was baptized. I was baptized at St. March, um, St. Mark's um, the home church, you know, in Toronto. At that time, there's just the St. Mark home church, um, the Father Ruiz church with St. George and St. Ruiz, and Tia Agea, Maria, and St. Damiana. Those three churches, okay? So I went to St. Mark. So I was um, there. Um, Father Marcos Marcos, you know, the first priest, okay? He, he was um, um, the priest at that church. He was serving me. And Father Ruiz from the St. George church, I went to to both churches, because Father Ruiz was my confession father, but Father Marcus, the St. Mark Church, was the church that I prayed in. So today I was to be baptized. Okay, um, the priest put the, my room oil into the, the, the water, and they prayed everything, and they said, okay, get up like, onto the chair to go into the baptismal font, because it's high up. I got up in the chair, and I'm just going to put my toe dip it into water before I'm going to go in. And when I dipped it, oh my God, I pulled it out right away. The water was hot. It is as hot as water that you use to make tea. I'm serious. You, I go, I will die. Like, like you, I cannot go in. I just touched it with my toe before. I'm going to really step in. And I pull my toe out. I said, it's hot. And the priest who put the water in, there were two priests, right? Father Ruiz and Father Marcus. Father Ruiz was the one who, who put the water. Father Marcos stared at him. I said, what did you do, right? And Father Ruiz said, no, it's not hot. So I put my foot, my, my, my toe into it right away again. And you know what? It was not hot. The heart, now that I think back, it's due to the Holy Spirit. You know how we say we are baptized with water and, and fire or, the, or water and the Holy Spirit? So the Holy Spirit appeared to me as fire. It was hot. When Father Roy said it's not hot, it turned back to not hot. So I stepped into the baptismal font and... I was nervous, like, you know, like, I was baptized at 6 in the morning in February, it's cold, right? Because they didn't turn on the heat, right? At the beginning of the church, right? Because there's no surface. And then I was cold, and I was wearing the tonga, like an old one of the church, just to be dressed in white. And, you know, kind of cold inside, there's no, not much clothing underneath me. And I was nervous, like, what will happen when I go home? Because I didn't tell my mom and dad that I'm going to baptize, right? So I was just afraid, you know, all the nerves. Um, all the anxiety, when I s stepped into the water, um, 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 Abuna told me to sit down because the water came up to here, I have to sit down for it to come up to here because I'm tall. When I sat down, the water came up to here. You know what? All of a sudden, all my fear and cold, all of a sudden it disappeared. And I felt so, oh my God, the temperature of the water is so perfect. It's just, it's just perfect, not cold, not hot. And I felt all of a sudden, all my anxiety and all my stress, it just left immediately. And I felt, my God, I haven't felt so peaceful in my life. I'm so serious. Like, it's like, it's like a story. You hear it, but really I felt it. And then, so they baptized me three times, you know, they, they just bow your head and they put the water on me. And then afterwards, I got out of the water, and when I got out, I had to go and change back into new clothing. When I went to the washroom to change, the, the, the tonia still had the water stuck on me, right? I felt all of a sudden, I 
as though the water turned to ice, but there's no ice. But it was so cold. All of a sudden, my, my body started shivering, shivering, shivering. I have felt so cold before in my life. And I felt that God is letting me know, now that you, you're back out of the water, like when I was in the water, it was like heaven, and now, or, or paradise, now I'm out of the water and back into the world. And that your world will be, it's tough, it will be hard. hard. That's why I'm shivering, I'm so cold. And then after I got changed, then then um, then I went to another church, to St. George Church for, for Mass. Because St. Mark didn't have Mass on, on Saturdays. So I got baptized there, and then went to St. George Church to pray the Mass. I'll tell you another miracle. It's my first time taking, it's my first time taking communion, right? Mass. Father Ruiz told me before baptism, he said, well, I should confess before I get baptized and before I take my first communion. I told him, I don't feel comfortable doing that. It's not for me. Yeah. And then he said, okay, you're like a baby. We baptize babies before they confess and before they, you know, they, they, they confess later and we still give them communion. He said, because um, I had faith at that time like for a year and a half. He said, you're like a baby then, your spiritual life. But I was 24 years old. He said, okay, he baptized me without me confessing because I told him, that's not for me. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Okay, my first communion. I took the body, fine. When I took the blood, you know what? It was so bitter. Oh my God, I, it was so bitter that I, I took my, well, I know I was told that you, you can't spit it out. I just forced myself to swallow it, and it was so bitter. I felt my whole mouth, my tongue was so bitter. And when it, when it went down my throat, and I felt my esophagus was so bitter. I don't know how I felt it. It went down into my stomach. I felt my whole stomach was so bitter. I felt, oh my God, like, like, how can you people take it? It was so bitter that afterwards, like eating and brushing teeth and everything, would not wash it off. It took like a week before like eating, you know, every day and drinking and brushing teeth for the bitter taste to kind of wear off so that I don't feel so sick. And then people would call me and she would say, come from us, you know, come from us to communion. And then when I take it the second time, oh my God, it's so bitter. I took it about two, three times. I said, okay, I can't take it. I just can't. I just can't, like, it just tastes so bad, it's just, it's ruining my, my mouth, my taste buds. It's like everything I eat after that, it's bitter. So then people say, well, why don't we see you see at church? I said, well, I told one of my friends, I told because I don't know, it tastes so bitter, how can you people take it? Because I see even the babies, they take communion, and from their facial expression, I don't get the impression that they, they find it tastes bad. And when I look at all your faces, when you take the blood, I don't, even kids take it, I don't feel like it shows that it tastes bad. So I told one of the, my friends at church, I said, it tastes so bitter. And she said, really? It never tastes bitter. I said, you sure? I don't know. It tastes so bitter. I don't know. I don't feel up to it. It makes me so sick. Then she asked me to talk to her dad. Her dad preaches in the church. He's like a preacher, you know. So I told him, and then he said, what? It tastes like honey. It's sweet. It's sugar. How? No. Wait. Did you confess? I said, no, because I told Father Ray, I'm not up to it. And he said, no, my dear, it's a sacrament. You cannot take it without confession. So I actually, you know, went to confess for the first time. And after I confessed, you know what? It never tasted bitter again. I'm so serious. I don't know how to say it. Like, so I'm the type, how can I say, you people got the faith, you went through, I don't know, Sunday school. You know how much Sunday school I got? I confess. I was what? Maybe 24, 25 years old. And I, you know, Christianity is no, have many questions, and I don't know where to begin to learn. 
so father always he was my um, confession father he said why don't you try going to Sunday school just go to grade 10 and try with grade 10 at St. George I went one time and I never went back I, I'm, I'm a dropout because they were talking about they want freedom from the parents to go to disco or go parties like like I'm I'm like working as a pharmacist I have freedom like I just didn't feel that I fit in their age group so I never went back so how did I do it I took the apprenticeship route I learned everything from my questions God put questions in me or I'm the type to have questions and I ask people and I learn through me asking people or if I hear sermons I believe it. God give me faith to believe. Like, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and the rest will be added to you. When I hear that, I believe it. Not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry for itself. Enough is is just terrible today. To love God more than your family, your your mother and father and sisters. It, when I hear these sayings being read in church, I just believed it. And I think the verses that caught me the most is what, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and the rest will be added unto you. Not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry, you know, for its own. And it's just like these two verses, I think, gave me the foundation to enter the monastic life. When I didn't know anything, like I heard the voice of God telling me to enter the monastery. I don't know what is what they do in the monastery. I don't know anyone. I don't know Egypt. I don't know anything. I don't know. But I just seek you first the kingdom of God. And when I hear the voice of God, I said, Okay. Okay. I think it was the difference between me and most people. It's not that I'm better or special. If you get to know me, I'm just a very ordinary person, regular person. But I always meditate about life, and I don't want to waste life. I want to, I want to seize the day, live my life to the fullest. So that when it comes time for me to die, I'm going to say, God, I'm ready to die. I live my life to the fullest. I'm fulfilled. I'm not just happy, but not fulfilled. I want a fulfilled life, and I want the best in heaven. Because now I know there is heaven, and I felt heaven. I don't want just 50%. I want as much as possible. I want 100%. Why not? Why not go for the best? I'm doing it for myself. You know, you think about your life, you help people. Don't forget about yourself. We're going to die one day. Even if we live to 120 years old. So what? Time flies. I'm going to be prepared for death. I'm going to say, I've seized the day. I've lived my life to the fullest. God, I'm ready to die. Take me. I'm ready to die. Why not? Don't be too wrapped up in worldly things. Worldly things, yes, you need to take care of your kids. Yes, you need to do this and that. But love God above all creation. Be attached to God. And enjoy creation. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your kids. Give to them. But don't be attached to them. Give to them and be attached to God. When I look at saints, for example, Virgin Mary, St. George, all the saints, St. Damiana, why are they helping us? They're in paradise. Why do they care about us? They don't even know us. We don't even know them. Virgin Mary, like, almost 2,000 years ago. She doesn't know you or me. Why does she care about us? You know what? She kept the commandment of God even more. Commandment of God is love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbors as yourself. She loves her neighbors, us, more than herself. She cares for us on earth, when she should be rejoicing in paradise. She doesn't care about herself rejoicing. She's worried about us. She's praying for us. She's repenting for us. She's doing miracles for us. She did more than the commandments of God. Why don't we do that too? Why not? Yes? Sing to me, Anna. Why do I love to Yes? 
Yes or no? Yes? Yes? Was it different tortures? Was the five tortures of Saint Damiana? Are there kids? Because sometimes they say, for me not to, not to say it, because some kids might, might have dreams. I'll tell you after. Okay. Um, yes? How do I interact with them? How do I interact with the aspects of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit? They are one God. Oh, I heard the first of the Father telling me about the Son. Yes, even in the Bible it says, the Father draws people to the Son, and the Son draws people to the Father. So they are together, is one God. But that I heard the voice of God the Father. I'll tell you why. Because, you know, like when people don't know the Son, people are not Christians, right? They think Allah, or the Jews, they are praying to God. God, what? God the Father. Because they don't know the Son, right? So even when I was in Buddhism, I thought the Buddhists were, you know, God like the Father, you know what I mean? But I didn't know the story, there's a Son. So, it makes sense that God the Father replied to me because that was the God that I was searching for or thinking I was praying to. So he told me about the Son, Jesus, that man nailed to the cross. So the Father and Son, even if you read the Bible, the Father draws people to the Son and the Son, Jesus draws people to God the Father because they're together one God. Any, uh, yes? When I stepped into the monastery, 1998, 25 years ago, you know what I really felt? I was on my spiritual high. I was so, how can I say, like this, I don't know, God helped me so much that when I, when I was those five years in Toronto, I always felt I, I'm a misfit that doesn't fit. You know why? You people are loving. You people are good. You people are humble. I love you. The problem is the language. Coptic and Arabic and flipping back and forth in English, you know, like, like I just want to close my eyes or look at the icons and pray, but I can't because the language make me not understand. I wish it was on in English, but it never was. And even when I pray Mass, English Mass at St. Mark, they say it's called English Mass, but it's not all in English. And even the sermon, the priest will say the sermon 20 minutes in Arabic and 10 minutes after that, a summary. In, in English, so I know I didn't get everything. You know, it's just always the language made me feel like I just don't belong. Like, it's hard enough to go into a church that I'm the only Chinese, the only one who's not Egyptian, but to top it off, you have to make it in a language that I can understand, and I'm educated. I, I'm a pharmacist, but I cannot understand Coptic and Arabic. Like, like, you know, and I don't even know Christianity. Like, now, you make it more impossible for me. You know, so it was like, so I always felt that I didn't fit. I'm a misfit that doesn't fit. So you go to church, you're happy, you understand, you feel, you know. I felt pain and suffering when I go. But why did I come? Because I felt my spirit needed it, wanted it. I came for God. And sometimes, you know, I don't know, I just came for God. I didn't come for the social life, for sure. And I didn't come because I want to marry someone Egyptian. I came for God. I just came for God and I forced myself. And my favorite prayer is the Tasbaha. I loved it. Why? Even though I didn't understand the Coptic and Arabic, the Spirit touches me. It touches my, my soul so much that I'm so uplifted. I don't know. I think when you come to church, you know, I'm not saying you don't do this, but I'm saying, you know, just, it's, just come for God. Just come for God. First yourself, you come for God. God, I'm here. I'm for you. I want to talk to you. I just long for you. I just, I love you. Help me to love you more. Just come for God. And that's what I did. I'm not better than anyone, but I think the difference is, I don't give up. And I know what I want. I want God. Whereas people, I think they don't know what they want. Like, they don't have a goal in life. You know, if you look at the people who are most successful in life, the richest people in life, in the world. They are not the smartest people. They are people who have a motivation, they have a goal, and they're not going to give up until they make it. I'm serious. Like, I, I, 
I know there are people in our church they want to be a doctor. He wants to be a doctor. He he can't get into you know far, um, doctor in in Ontario. He applies to another province, can't get in. Applies to, to the states, can't get in. Apply to Europe. Apply you know just won't stop until he gets it. And at the end they get it. They just have a motivation, and they're not gonna. They're most motivated. I think that's what makes success. It's like you create the opportunity, you make things work, you work hard for it. I think that's the difference between me and most people. Most people are too busy with things in the world. I don't know what they're busy with, but it's just not fully God. I'm not better. I just have a motivation. I have a goal. I have God before me, and that's all I want. And you know what? God is free. No one's going to compete with me. Just say, for example, if you want, want to be a doctor, but you may not get in because you didn't get the marks. You didn't get the interview. You don't have the money. You don't have the opportunity. I want God. No one is competing with me. Everyone can go for God 100%. I think the difference between me and most people is that I just want God. And it's not because I'm better. Because I realize nothing in the world is worth my life. Not my time to give it that much. Like, yes, enjoy, yes, serve people, yes, help people, and that's what I'm trying to do here. But you know, don't forget about yourself. We're going to die one day. You don't want the 100% in heaven? Okay. That's your problem. I'm going for it. Yes, yes, yes. Hello? Hello? Yes? It's words, no sound. I heard the voice of God four times speaking to me. It's not a voice that can speak to you. Because God doesn't have focal cords, right? Like, he's not a person, right? It's words, I can tell you his words. It went into the mind, and I'm, my thoughts, I'm talking to into my, I can tell you his words, and I can tell you what I'm telling you in my mind. It's words, like someone talking to your mind, and you're responding, asking. And in one minute, or short period of time, a few seconds, you can... Finish talking very fast. Like, talk many things in a short time. Any other questions? Yes? Sorry? Sorry? I can't hear. How did I show my parents' faith? How did I show my parent my faith? Sorry, the question. How did I share my faith with my parents? Oh, um, I told them I have faith, but they were upset. But my parents are quite good, although they, because like, I have seven brothers and sisters, right? So I have four brothers, and then two older sisters, then me, and a younger brother. So by the time it got to me, you know, I'm not really that important, I guess, right? So, so um, um, they, they kind of give us freedom, although they don't understand, like, agree because my brothers won't listen to them like, about other things, right? So they're, they're just used to, you know, their kids have their own mind. So um, they were upset, but they're not the type to hit me or cast me out, like nothing like that. Any other question? Yes? Very easy, very easy. Very easy to be spiritual. You can do it right now. It's very easy. You don't have to be a nun. Okay, I'll tell you, but yes? Yeah, I have one brother and one sister. They marry into the Catholic Church when they were not Christian. They're spouse were. So years later, they got faith. Yeah, I have one brother and one sister. Catholic. Um, okay, how to be spiritual? It's so easy. It is. How? God said, Jesus said, love me with all your heart, your soul, your soul is your passion, your desire. Do you really want God? And your mind, meaning your thinking and your imagination. Okay. They all help one another. Okay, so how can you love God? First, you have to know what God is. God is the creator, good God. He protects us from the devil. He created the angels to come down to serve us. Even Archangel Michael served us. He's the head. You know, like God created creation for humanity to enjoy the animals, the food, everything. God, God created us to live on planet Earth. We have a period of time. We are his children. We can go to heaven. If you just, you know, every day God protects you and gives, you, gives us provides for us, 
give us breath, we are alive, thank God for whatever you have. Just in your mind, have very short prayers to recognize God. You know, when I wake up, I say, God, Jesus, I love you. When I sleep, I say, God, pray for these people, help them, help them, I love you. You know, just have him in your mind and in your heart that you so you want him, you love him. You don't always have to be praying and talking prayers. You can, your soul, you know, your desire, that's your soul, love him. I, and after you do that, like just have him throughout the day, even when you're working, okay? Help me with this. Um, thank you for this. Um, pray for my boss. He's upset. Or if someone looks sad, they have a problem, pray for them. Just show prayers throughout the day and try to do good. Do something. Just talking is not enough. You have to do something. Do things to help people. Volunteer. Even, you know, volunteer, not just always with the church. Do something back to society if you can. Even just two hours a, a week. Try to do some good back, contribute back to humanity, to society. When you do good, you are giving love to your neighbors. God will bless you. When you keep the commandments of God, you have to keep the commandments of God. When you keep the commandments of God, the Holy Spirit. You know, there's, um, the, the psalm says, rejoice and always rejoice. How can you do that? When your conscience is clear, when you are keeping the commandments of God into his will, and when you repent of your sins, then when your conscience is clear, you will have peace because the Holy Spirit will dwell in you. But if you're sinful, you don't repent, or you don't keep the commandments of God, God cannot give you peace, love, and joy. He will not dwell in you. Yes? Why did I choose St. Demiana? She's my favorite. I was baptized with her name. Um, she is... Of all the people, or oh, I'll tell you, when I was going to be baptized, I thought, I don't know, maybe I'll get a baptismal name. The two priests didn't tell me I would get, get a baptismal name. You know how Catholics, they get a godmother and they get a baptismal name? But I guess cops, people don't, make, no one told me. The two priests didn't tell me I, I was going to get a godmother or get a baptismal name. But people in the church said, what do you want your baptismal name to be? I said, I don't know. Nobody told me. Like the priest didn't tell me I get a baptismal name or, or get a godmother. So, but then I thought, okay, if I can choose, I'm thinking, I'm going to be baptized, right? I want a present. I pray to God. I said, I want a present from you, God. I'm going to get baptized. You know what I want? The only thing I want is I want a godmother. Because, you know, my family, they're not religious, right? And I, there's no one in the church that, like, you know, all the people are very kind and nice and saintly, saintly, but I don't feel to be my mother, okay? So I told God, you know who I want to be my godmother? I want St. Demiana. Why? She's exactly the type of person I love. She is righteous. She loves God. She's a nun. I wanted to be a nun even when I was a kid. Thought maybe become a boot. Buddhist nun. She's ascetic and she a martyr. I admire people who are brave. I admire soldiers. I admire police officers. I admire people who would risk their life to die for others. I find they're so courageous. They're, they're not selfish. Wow. Like, I admire courage. She has that. She's the perfect personality of a person that I admire. So then when it came time for me to be baptized, I told God, I want a gift from you. I want a godmother. I choose Saint Diana. And how will I know you give her to be my godmother if I'm baptized with her name? If not, then I know from you, you don't give her to be my mother. And if you don't, I don't want anything from you, God. I don't want anything. I don't want anything because there's nothing else I want. So the priest didn't tell me I was going to be baptized. And then after they prayed, you know, day of my baptism, remember I told you I went up on the chair to put my toe into the hot water. Okay? Before I was, I was going to even put my toe into the water, to say it's hard, Father Marcus pulled me, my arm, and said, wait, what do you want your baptismal name to be? Can you imagine? Just wait before I'm going to put my toe in the water and up on the chair and I'm just about to, you know, step in. He said, wait, he pulled me back so that I didn't put my foot in. He said, what do you want your baptismal name to be? Some people said, who were 
And then they said, Mary, some said to me, Anna. I said, tell me, Anna. So she became a mother. And I, why? And then afterwards, after I was baptized and I had the desire to become a nun, and I told God, you know what? I want to be with my mother. And uh, he gave me this as well. So I heard the voice of God to enter the monastery of St. Damiana the second time I visited it. Yes? Okay, I'll tell you how I study. I don't think the, I don't know how the church does it because I never went through the church system, okay? I study like this. I've been studying for over 10 years and I still haven't finished it. I finished the New Testament, but not the Old Testament. Old Testament, I'm about three quarters done. I study with six nines. Each nine gave me a lesson a week and each lesson is one and a half hour. I study word by word word by word and how this what does this mean and how how did does it how can I, it how can i benefit now how can i benefit now like that's how i study and that's why it's taking me so long 10 years with, with six nines every week and each one teach me something like one teach me the book of job another teach me the proverbs another teach me um um one of the gospels for example okay so and i go in order it's over 10 years, I can't finish the Bible because I can ask all the questions I want. And when then she was study before she sits with me, we go according to time, not, not quantity, how much we have to cover. I can stay in one first for two weeks until I, I'm satisfied. And, and, and I can ask all the questions that I want aside from it. That's how I study. And that's why I'm so enlightened because I make it become so alive and so applicable. It's not just memorizing stories. I don't memorize. Um, I see how, what, what is God saying? How is this happening in our days now? How does this apply to me now? How can we benefit now? That's how I study. Yes. Sorry. Did I see Saint Mianek? No. But I feel her. And when I prayed to Saint Mianek before, I went. I, I prayed to her. I said, I love you. How did you become so great? I want to know what is in you, eh? To become so great. You know what it is, I felt? It's her faith and love. I'm serious. It's her faith and love that make her so great. She's the princess of our martyrs. She died four times. Okay, and fourth time she really died, okay? She is so great. How? Her faith and love for God. Focus on love. Focus on love. Focus on love. God, I want to give you, I love you with my, it's a commandment. Love you my whole heart, mind, and soul. Help me to love you with a whole heart, mind, and soul. And give to creation. Give his unconditional love to people. Don't want anything from creation. Don't want anything from people. You want people's love? You're going to be hurt. It's not going to fulfill you. It's going to be temporary. They're going to leave. They're going to change. You're going to change. They're going to die. Forget it. God is love. Get it from God. Get it from God and give his unconditional love to people. And you'll be the happiest person. Because what? You're not in need. You're fulfilled by God. And you give. And when you give his love, you're the happiest. Because you're doing something God. You do, you're keeping his commandments. I'm serious. This is the way to be happy. Live in the world. And not, but don't be attached to it. Be attached to God. Live in the world. Be attached to God. And give to humanity. Give to people. And don't want anything from them. When you want something, you know what? You're going to be hurt. I'm serious. You're going to be hurt. You're putting yourself on a position that very easy. You're going to be hurt. Because things change or things don't happen the way you want. What you want, you don't get. What you don't want, you get. You know, you have all these problems. You don't want anything. And you say, God, all I want is you. Anything comes in the world, help me to accept it and make the most out of it. Yes. Sorry? What's a godmother? It's, it's a person who would raise that, that, that new Christian to be, like, teach that new Christian about Christianity and about God and how to be a good Christian. Yes? <laughs> 